Nani uh, live. I don't have my glasses on, and I want to say that's Anton. Yeah, you would, you would be correct if you said that. That okay. is, in fact, Major Anton Ogden of uh, DLC. Ty, uh, good morning, and thanks for joining us. Today. Good morning, everyone. Tyler Mastinani here reporting from DOC. We've got Major Anton Uggen joining us to give us the latest. This morning, just before 7 o'clock, we did have a local detainee escape. Can you please give us the details on that? Yes, at around 6.50 this morning or a little bit around that time, uh, the officer assigned to our quarantine area behind Post 16, where our positive inmates are, their detainees are housed, uh, discovered that one of them, uh, Anthony, uh, Camacho was missing and so immediately they searched the area as, as protocol and when we couldn't locate him uh, phone calls were made to local law enforcement and we declared him a, an escape and so right now we are working with the Guam police and other law enforcement including our SOAR team and other uh, personnel in recovery right now. Can you please uh, give us a bit of a background on what is, is, is known to be a violent criminal? What should the community be aware of? And if they do happen to spot him, what should be the protocol? Well, his charges in here range from robbery to theft of property to burglary. Uh, he has no violent history in the deal in the while confined. But again, I advise everybody that regardless of what their initial charges are, if they escape from the prison, just consider them dangerous. And if they see them or have or see him and or have information, contact the proper authorities. Uh, they can call GPD or they can call here at DOC 734-3981 or our visitation processing center where we have uh, set up our uh, command center, uh, 734-4566 and leave the information with the officers that are here and we will disseminate it out to the officers in the field. But yeah, I, I would not recommend you try to apprehend him yourself. Again, if you have information, uh, contact the local authorities and let them appreh apprehend him. Okay, and I think that's the most important thing to take away. Do not approach him if you do spot him. Call the proper authorities. And lastly, uh, Major Uggen, we do understand that this is a COVID positive patient. Um, he was in the quarantine and isolation facility on the on the property. Um, and then there's also uh, something about shackles. Uh, can you can you give us well, a little bit about that? Again, we're still looking into all the facts surrounding his escape. Uh, uh, again, that unit is our quarantine isolation outside the compound. Uh, we did put some implement some security measures in place, but I don't have all the details at this point as far as, you know, uh, we do require them to wear leg irons up there, but I don't have all the uh, information as far as what happened. If he had it on him, if he didn't have it on him, I don't know. That's something we would need to look into uh, once he's recovery. Right now we're focusing on recovery and then we will we will get down into what really happened. Thank you so much, Major Again, sure. Remember, um, he is... Anthony Lewis Camacho uh, escaped from DOC just before six o'clock, uh, seven o'clock this morning. And if you do see him, do not approach. Call the proper authorities. And Major, again, thank you so much. Back to you guys in studio. Thank you, uh, Major. If you could just hang around for just a sec. Okay. Uh, we wanted to ask uh, more about the COVID quarantine isolation facility, which you said is located outside the compound. Yes, our quarantine facility, Chris, is located uh, behind our post-16 general population housing unit. Uh, again, that was set up there months ago uh, to house our quarantine. We would try to keep them away from the facility. Uh, and they, they, have, they do have a, a fence around the, the two tents. These are warrior tents uh, that were put up months ago. Uh, and again, you know, we're not sure what really happened that, you know, led to an escape, but we'll look into it as soon as we... Uh, as soon as we recover him. That's our pri priority right now is to recover him. How many uh, detainees, detainees and inmates or just detainees that are in the uh, isolation? I believe, I believe right now the count up there is about three or four. I, I know last yesterday was around three. Mm -hmm. So we don't have huge numbers of uh, people up there right now. Mm -hmm. and, and there's several of them. And when's the last time they did the head count? Or how you know, often? Uh, Sabrina, we're still, again, our, our, my IA officers are up there collecting that information, the log books and some things like that. So I don't have that information available right now, but but uh, we will get to the bottom of, you know, when all, when those are same questions we have as far as what was the last head count and when was he last seen and, and uh, you know, all those other questions, of course, that most people have, we have the same one. So right. uh, once, again, once uh, the recovery, we are looking into everything right now, but our primary focus is on recovery right now. Okay. 
But as, as far as you know, you, you, you guys discovered, though, that he was missing just before 7 o'clock uh, this morning. So there's no real way of knowing. Like, he could have been out in the community, you know, out for hours, right? Well, the, the information we gathered at this point, Sabrina, is that uh, he was, a uh, uh, head count was given around 6 in the morning uh, and he during Reveille, and he was present. That's the information that is being relayed to us right now. Again, I don't have all the log books and the blotters in front of me, but it was around six, right, just about seven when the officer was doing, I believe, another head count, and and he noticed he was uh, not around. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned these are the warrior tents. Would these tents, I mean, if if he had like a a knife or something sharp, would he be able to cut through the tent and and make his way out? Yeah, the, the, these tents are are uh, just just canvas material tent tents. They're not concrete or steel or anything like that so uh, it is possible to damage it uh, by cutting it but at this time I don't I don't know if that's one of his ways that he got out of the facility again we're still looking into it uh, and we'll know more as the day goes by all right any indication that he may have been helped there's no indication that he was out before before the you know too much before the officer uh, discovered him missing so Mm -hmm. uh, at this point, I have no reason to believe he was, he had escaped earlier than, than 6, 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any uh, indication that he may have been assisted in his uh, escape effort? Like if there was a car waiting outside? N no, not, not at this time. But again, if anybody out there is assisting him, I would caution them uh, because they can also face criminal charges if, they're, if it's discovered that they did assist him in this escape. And they could get COVID too. Thanks a lot, Anton. Appreciate uh, okay. your time. Thank you Thank so you much. Thank you, Major. Good luck. Thank you. Thank All you, right. guys. Good luck. Thank Godspeed. You. There you go. And just a little bit about uh, Anthony Lewis uh, Partego Camacho. He does have a criminal history. No He's way. been in and out of jail, uh, I want to say since 2013, uh, when he was first uh, busted for terroristic conduct, family violence, and criminal mischief. Um, he was also in jail for burglary, criminal mischief, conspiracy, guilt established by complicity, theft, um, some of the other um, charges he's been in DOC for a uh, robbery as a second degree uh, felony criminal facilitation and as uh, I believe Anton may have said or Tyler may have said he's currently in for a uh, parole yeah. violations yeah. but I mean we're talking reckless driving mm -hmm. aggravated assault uh, assault against a peace officer eluding uh, a police officer You have any information? You know where he's at. You see him. Don't approach him. He's a COVID positive. A uh, call GPD. Call nine one one. Call four seven seven H E L P, uh, and report him. And if you are assisting him, and helping him, you will be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. Right, and you might also be like in the way when they go to apprehend him. And mm -hmm. You know, just just be careful and uh, just call the police if you're right. with them. And GPD is uh, assisting. Uh, I did speak with the uh, chief of police, Steve Ignacio. Right. They got their special operations division officers on the hunt. Uh, KUAM TV, thank you guys so much for jamming with us uh, for this extended uh, edition of the link with that live update there with Tyler Matanani, of course, from the KUAM news team. We've always got your back with our primetime newscast for Jason. Uh, Joe, sir, my name's Chris. I'm Sabrina. Esther. Adios!